Hi friends, it's so good to see you today for our WPSU's virtual summer camp where we're exploring global arts. My name is Sarah Hamilton and I'm the education program manager with WPSU. Today we are traveling far all the way to Australia to learn about some incredible Arnhem Land Aboriginal art. With us today is my friend Julia Nelson. So let's see what she has to share with us. Hi, my name is Julia Nelson and I'm a fiber artist. That means I work with cloth material. Um, I draw with the sewing machine for the most part when I do my fiber artwork rather than drawing with a pencil. Um, and with my pieces, I tend to focus a lot on pattern and the direction the pattern's taking. So I'll look for um, lines and stripes. I'll look for um, textures and how something is shiny. Um, and based on that and my ideas, um, that's how I'll end up making my picture or my painting or collage out of cloth. In this one here, uh, I visited a city and you can see the buildings here. And then um, it was beautiful and sunny that day. And so up above you can see the colors in the sky and the light coming through. Let's go look at another one. In this collage I did, um, this is about city buildings. This is um, after I took a visit to a city named Pittsburgh, which I absolutely love. And if you see, you look carefully, you'll see I have pattern in here, all right, and lots of texture. And in between the cities, it's called negative space. Between the buildings is negative space. And in the negative space, I fill that up with pattern, um, with texture. The Arnhem artists of Australia who did the bark painting, they also do the same thing. Instead of filling in the space between two objects with just color, they went ahead and they did like I did. They like to put patterns in, cross-hatching patterns. Um, I, I use sewing machine lines to make these horizontal things. They use very, very tiny brushes and they would make really tiny little lines. Bark painting is an Aboriginal Australian art form that was developed and is still created by Aboriginal artists in Arnhem Land. The word Aboriginal refers to a distinct population of people and descendants that were the first ones to live on mainland Australia. They have lived there for about 50,000 years. There are about 500 different Aboriginal peoples in Australia, each with their own language, their own territory and culture. So for bark painting, this was and is primarily created by Aboriginal people in Arnhem Land, which is in, located in Northern Australia. Traditionally, bark paintings were introduced for instructional and ceremonial purposes, and they were transient objects. That means they were passed from person to person. We are lucky enough to be able to appreciate and understand this art through the sharing from Aboriginal artists, such as Yurrawala, who felt that showing the bark paintings to people all over the world would help people like you and me understand how important the land was to Aboriginal people and that they could appreciate their culture by studying the bark paintings. The subjects of these bark paintings were spiritual, narrative, and informative. They used their paintings to commemorate and pass on traditions, memories, and significant moments that were unique to their family or clan. We are lucky that bark painters continued in this tradition using their art as a voice to point out injustices or celebrate their cultures linked to the land in these more modern times. Bark painting artists make their own paints from rocks and minerals that they gather from the ground. They will grind it and mix it with animal fat and the sticky juice from plants to hold it together to actually paint with. The paint we are used to using is made in a similar way. You'll see a lot of earth colors in this art, like black, white, brown, and yellow, because these are the colors of the minerals and rocks that they use. The bark they use comes from a tree that sheds its bark every year. The bark is gathered and dried in a fire and then flattened so that it can be painted on. If we are used to leaves falling every autumn. Imagine if we painted on leaves and we look forward to their falling so that we could paint on them. Um, the brushes are traditionally made from grass or human hair. They need to be long enough to hold paint and thin enough to paint long straight lines. It's these lines that create wonderful crosshatch patterns in their work in rows of contrasting colorful areas of pattern. So today what I'd like to show you is some actual bark. This is from a maple tree and this is kind of similar to um, 
what they might um, do. They'll, they'll take the bark off, but it comes in much bigger sheets. And um, see how curved it is because it goes around the tree? Well, they'll take it and they'll put it in a fire and then they'll flatten it down. Um, when you do your project, if you want to do something really fancy to your paint, your painting, you can take your paper and get it really wet and then un unfold it and then let it dry and then you can iron it. And that's kind of the same thing. So they use a fire to dry the bark out and flatten it. You can, you know, find some bark after a storm like I did and you can see how rough it is um, and get an appreciation for what's involved in this. So bark painting artists like to paint stories that they remembered from things they did or just imagining in their head. They had memory maps showing you perhaps where an animal might have spent its day. You can do this too, and I'm going to show you here. Let's imagine an animal that makes interesting tracks. Um, I have many birds where I live, and they leave patterns in the wet dirt or snow. So using just simple shapes, let's suggest a bird. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bird body and a beak, and then I'm just going to put some feet and just remember all those lines and patterns the um, artist made. So this will be my bird shape. Then we can imagine all the paths the bird has taken. So maybe before he went into a tree, maybe this bird was at a flower. So before I make the flower, I'm going to show you the path. And I'm going to make sure that you can see the path. So I'm putting many lines, and this will be where it is, many lines to um, where the path is. All right, and I will use, I'll use a little bit of a yellow mixed in with my, with my red. So for the flower, I'm going to use a, simple shape like I did for the bird. For the flower, I'm going to go like this. Very nice straight lines coming out. And there's a lot of repetition. We go over and over the lines. I get calmed down when I paint like this. So, so there's the flower. It doesn't look like a real flower. It's my idea of a flower for the bird. And let's just say, before he went there, get some more of that, that red color. If you notice, I'm using the colors that I'm trying to imagine um, uh, the artist would have used um, that came from the ground. Let's just say before that, he had spent some time flying around and let's see where would a bird want to go if he was really thirsty well, I think you already know I'm going to be painting some water and because I have blue paint well I'm going to use that for my water so let me clean this off here and I put a little bit of black, black watercolor in my blue. And then I'm going to use this kind of line to show that this is the water. It's not a real choppy blue line. It's nice and calm because I guess I'm thinking if I were a bird, I'd want to come to calm water. But I guess if I was excited and I wanted to splash around with my friends, well, then maybe I would have really choppy water. And I am making line after line, repeating, showing you that nice, calm water line. And I'll Go ahead and 
make a path for the bird, maybe to meet a friend. So I'm going to do another bird. And I'm using my same shape, so a bird body. Um, I'm doing these lines that are diagonal, and they're just to suggest um, that he has wings. I really want to make you see where his friend was, so I am tripling the lines in this path. In this painting, I had, I had already started this painting, and in this painting, this is about, um, it's not about the path of a bird, this is a mother bird, and she's got some babies, and they're in different places, all right? And I, I want to explain to you what the patterns mean for me, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do, because this painting isn't finished yet. So the mother is in a nest made from lots of green grass, and those are the lines I used. There are different flowers on either side of her, and she's got one of her babies is down by the water. All right, and there's, they're more, they're wiggly because he's having fun in the water. And this um, other baby bird is inside a tree, and I've used some nice brown straight lines to show that. This baby bird is um, maybe on the sidewalk because of the little yellow lines. I could also say maybe that this baby bird is in a bunch of um, yellow flowers. And this baby bird is in the sand, and these lines that I used are wiggly lines and they're they're um i use those to show you how that bird is dancing around maybe he's giving himself a sand bath i don't know but i'm going to show you how she's going to go and get all the birds together and this is kind of a fun activity to do i want to show you through my pattern making um the path the journey that uh, one of my characters takes so it's kind of like a story so i'm going to do some black because this is very important um, for me that she gets her family back Maybe it's time for supper, and she says, come on, you guys have to come here and get supper. So I'm going to use a little shape like this. It looks like an arrow, and I'll do it. It's like a tiny version of that, and she goes over, and she gets that bird. And if I really wanted you to see that, I would do another row, perhaps, just so that you wouldn't miss that you, the person looking at the painting. And then she's going to go over and she's going to get the baby that has been sitting in the tree this whole time. I don't know if birds read books, but maybe this bird could be reading a book. That would be funny. And that would be okay because it's, it's your picture. And then she's going to go over here. I'm going to turn this around a little bit. Oops. So she's going to go over like this. I'm doing a double path just so that you can see. And then she's going to go over to this bird. It's playing in the sand. All right. And then she's going to go back. So I'm going to make the bird path go like this. Perhaps, I don't know, they almost look like tracks. And a lot of artists will do that. They'll do a version of what the tracks look like. They think the animals take. Really want to make sure you see this, though, so that I've got some more get myself some more paint before I run out. I'm using the very tip of my brush too because this is really small. Um, all right, so this is the path that the mother has taken. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, a different, slightly different color. And I'm gonna show you, I don't know if I have time to finish, but I'm gonna show you the tracks that all the other birds have taken. There are many birds in my picture, maybe even some you don't even see. And I'm going to now do the final part of the picture, and that is I'm filling up all these white spaces. Um, I mentioned that before, the negative spaces. And I'm going to take all the negative spaces, 
that are empty and I'm going to fill them with things that will help you understand my picture better. All right, tons of birds all over the place. And I'm doing this very simple pattern, this V pattern. It's like lines that meet but don't cross. And you see how I'm filling everything up. I might even do um, past that bird's um, cross. So let me turn this around, I'll show you quickly. Um, here's a path, there's a couple of paths that go between, but guess what? Sometimes the paths go through. So I'll do that, maybe I'll do that with a slightly different color. I'll get more of a yellow there and I will You can see I'm very carefully putting them inside. So I hope you enjoy this um, Australian bark painting and that you learn more about it and perhaps investigate.